So something I noticed with these being extremely intelligent snakes is that they actually really enjoy smaller prey items, or at least mine doesn't in particular. Um, anytime I've offered him like the, uh, because his head size and everything, he could accommodate like a small mouse. Oh, he would actually probably accommodate a large mouse, but he just won't go for it. He prefers um, a lot of smaller meals. I believe this is his fourth or fifth um, small mouse. So I do hoppers um, or small mice, which are roughly about the same size from my supplier. And um, yeah, he's just... God, he's just... Um, is fantastic is the word that comes to mind. There's a lot of other snakes that I I see and um I compare him to. It's it's really strange. Um that like sweet innocent like look and that big derpy head that dragon snakes have. Um I find Bolin's pythons have. Um that iridescent sheen and the white tiger stripe lipping like you would find on a white lip python. Uh, and, and, and all these snakes are, are just fantastic snakes in their own right. I am I am totally enamored with with the Bolens python though. I am I am definitely a, a hardcore fan <laughs> um, since working with the species. And uh, it's just been a real joy and a real treat. This is his new tub, actually. He's got, he's in the same um, 106 quart tub now as my ball pythons, but you can see he's not quite the same size. He's the same length, very, uh, which is quite impressive. Um, he's, he's pressing right around three foot mark, but he's very, very slender, much like a um, carpet python, which I, I used to have back in the past. I, had a um, a jungle ivory from Reptilis Herps. Uh, he, he was sired from Hammer. Hammer was a uh, jungle ivory as well. And um, I had picked up uh, a jungle ivory Django. So, so semi-aboreal, same slender size. I do find that these are a little bit more intelligent, like I find with my um, false water cobra, and maybe some of the other larger colubrids. And now I don't know if that's to uh, that has any association with the size of the skull, but um, and you can see in the background it's all some of my juvenile and uh, adult tarantulas, some of my postlotheria, but. Just a, just a real, a real treat. And I haven't been putting out uh, enough content for you guys, and I do apologize. Things have been quite busy. I did get sick with COVID for a time, um, but I'm, I'm past it. I'm over it, and I'm, I, I didn't want to make a big deal of it, and I'm not making a big deal of it. I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying um, that wasn't a lot of fun, and uh, it did put me down on my on my uh derriere for a while not gonna no no baby um super personable super sweet but since he just ate i'm not gonna screw around and handle him um yeah let's kick on the light so you can kind of see and i'll point out some things so in the back i got a humid hide and i usually have this covered with this foliage and that's just a little hack. I'll do another video about humid hide hacks. Uh, a piece of cork ground on the cool side. The back half is covered with the coconut husk. Um, then he's got his hot hide, which is that rock. And then underneath there, he can go underneath there. And then um, this half of the enclosure is just pure sphagnum moss. And then I do the um, this big water dish there that he can soak in. But he's going back in there towards his hot hide. I'm going to turn off the light there. 
because um, they are a nocturnal species. They're still a nocturnal species. Um, these guys will uh, creep out uh, in the evenings along their rock cliffs uh, that they that the juveniles have been known to hide in. And I've also done uh, some of the research that I found uh, also mentioned that some of the juveniles will for venture out even lower into uh, Papua New Guinea into the scrublands and uh, you know get some of those smaller prey items that may be available so having this low lying coverage um, right now in in his first year of life I think is appropriate um, I mean a lot of this hasn't been documented a lot of it hasn't been tried and and proven yet but I try to pioneer a lot of this stuff, uh, <laughs> tarantula collective. What am I? Uh, somebody just chimed in on one of my comments. I I am a part of a lot of Facebook groups, and I do subscribe to a lot of YouTube channels. So um, Richard at Tarantula Collective, um, I I am part of his Facebook group, and I follow him, and uh, he's he's very knowledgeable, and his his camera skills are much better than mine on his channel. Uh, he's got really great content, and um, I hope to add to that content in the future myself. But um, I, I love all creepy crawlies, so I have my scales, and I have my fur babies, you know, my eight-legged fur babies. And um, uh, if I'm just passionate about it, and I love it, and, I, and, and, and I'm knowledgeable enough, enough about it, I just like to share some of my experiences with you guys, and... Um, in the care and husbandry that I provide that uh, that works uh, in case you guys are looking at into into keeping some of the species that I have or um, you just aren't able to you know own some of those species that I have you know like not everybody can buy a Boland's Python or or even you know like uh, you know a, a, a Bronia Garminia the uh, Arboreal Mexican alligator lizards. Some of these uh, animals in the hobby can be quite pricey, um, but I'm I'm more than willing to share my experience and my baby my babies with you guys. So that being said, if you guys keep it, keep it crawling, and I'll see you next time.